Good to see you again. Happy Tuesday, 14th day of April 2020. Wake Up in Anchee Valley safely has returned to the airwaves. Thanks for watching us, however you are watching us. Over the air, via your local cable provider, via the World Wide Web, or through telepathy. Ooh, wouldn't that be cool? I'm Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Uh, lots of good stuff to get for you today. Lots of oh, good-looking weather forecasts for the most part. Although this incredibly dry weather continues, we touched on this a little bit uh, yesterday. We showed you that graphic from the National Weather Service letting you know how dry it has been, and it's going to continue to be dry. We need rain. We're not going to get any. Forecast details are coming up. I mean, it's going to be nice. I did a little yard work yesterday, but um, we need wet. We need, we need moisture. It's not going to happen. Hopefully, sometime soon, but it doesn't look like it in the forecast. Uh, we've got the latest news to get to, some of it COVID-19 related, some of it not. Also sports, uh, whatever sports we've been able to get together for you, including our beginning, uh, we're going to start rolling out later on this week, classic NCW Life sports broadcasts. We use the word classic with a bit of a tongue and a cheek. Uh, we also have the obscure holidays, some celebrity birthdays today in history, and everybody is entitled to Mike McNani's opinion. It is considerably warmer uh, at this hour now than it was 24 hours ago. We were in the lower 30s. I think we were at 33 degrees yesterday at this time. We're at 46 degrees because as you can tell we have a few high clouds. Although yesterday's high of 63 was not near what the National Weather Service well, they were predicting. Yeah, I guess it was. They were predicting about 65 and so we were pretty close to that. Our normal highs around 61. Our temperatures are going to be above normal but our precipitation below normal. Again, details are coming up. Let's take you around the valley in a couple minutes after the hour with our Valley View cameras around North Central Washington courtesy of Local Tail Sky Fi High Speed Wireless Setup. And once again, the cross camera always gets to do the honors. It's our most used camera. Very handy tool. It is a tool. It's not a toy. Can't stress that enough as the sun begins to get the job done. It's been up since 613. It will uh, set tonight at 750. 13 hours and 37 minutes of daylight. The mighty Columbia right down the middle of your screen, dividing Wenatchee and East Wenatchee. Chelan and Douglas counties, but we're not really divided. It's one big valley. We're all an interconnected group here. So there we go. Camera number two. It's a guess. I don't know. Megan has to decide. Uh, that's looking to the east. It's high up. I'm thinking Cashmere's down there. Outside of that, I give up, Megan. That that's the Tumwater Canyon. Okay, so I missed that one altogether. Uh, we're a little farther west than I anticipated. That's the Tumwater uh, canyon camera. Not quite in the Tumwater Canyon. It would be silly to put it in there. You couldn't see anything. So Leavenworth is down there. We'll have the latest update, by the way, on the uh, what they call the Alpenhof fire. That five-acre blaze, not much, but it's also a rather disconcerting beginning to the fire season, especially with these drought conditions going on. So good morning, Leavenworth. Camera three. Well, that's a no-brainer. That's Omi Gardens. Hi, Omi Gardens. How are you? They should be getting ready to be, have a full super spring of good time, fun stuff at Oma Gardens, and that ain't happening. You can still adopt a bench, though. That program continues. If you're a big fan of Omi Gardens, I know I am, uh, they have all of these benches, and it gives you a chance to adopt a bench and put a little money in the coffers for the friends of Omi Gardens. In the meantime, Omi Gardens, like everybody else, is kind of in a wait-and-see mode as we look at out over the Stimmel Complex and the old station area. And the Otabashian Bridge, which once again, like everybody else, has really light traffic. Traffic, according to the Washington State Department of Transportation, is down about a half of what it would normally be. Obviously, a lot of people are staying home and staying healthy. There's no school. Many businesses are closed. All those things that would drive traffic are not happening. That's why the traffic has been so light. It's been almost strange at times. And camera four. Hey, good morning to, well, that's Lake Antiat. Um, we're looking to the south. Is that the Arundel Rock camera? Ah, she moved it a little bit. Normally I could see, or normally you could see, uh, Turtle Rock, which is off to your left. Right, right in the middle of your screen, I believe, but way off in the distance, is Rocky Reach Dam. Lake Antiat, of course, is the Columbia River behind Rocky Reach Dam. Of course, Antiat in the early 1960s, when the dam was completed and they began to fill it up, uh, the original town of Antiat got buried in water and they had to move it. These things happen. Progress, I suppose. Good morning to our friends in the greater Antioch and Arondo area. That's a nice tour. 
courtesy of Local Tel SkyFi High Speed Wireless. You know how it works by now. You can have high speed wire. You can have high speed internet to your home, and you don't need fiber. All you need to do is have a line of sight from whatever it is your cabin or your home. And if you're able to see one of our towers, which are everywhere, all over the Wenatchee Valley, up north to the Okanagan Valley, out in the Columbia Basin, Grant County, there we got towers all over the place. If you can see a tower, you might be able to get uh, SkyFi. Give local tele a call at 888-8888. Going to look ahead to tomorrow, first of all, because it's going to be windy. Grant talked about last night in the weather. The gradient is going to get really tight uh, around the uh, Pacific Coast area that's going to move in. So we're looking at pretty breezy conditions for all of North Central Washington on Wednesday. Once again, the upper part of uh, our viewing area is going to have the strongest winds. Uh, that is the Okanagan Valley. It is narrow. The winds can get channeled into that narrow little gap and get up to a pretty good uh, pretty good speed. And then, of course, it spills right down into the Columbia Basin, so Moses Lake. Once again, you'll be dealing with some poor visibility, it looks like, on, uh, on Wednesday. Remember on Saturday, they had a pretty good dust storm, which caused a pileup on I-90. That could happen very much again. Uh, in the Moses Lake and Columbia Basin area on Wednesday, especially Wednesday afternoon. It's been dry everywhere, and there's simply nothing to hold the dust and the dirt to the earth. And uh, the wind picks up, and away you go. Here in the Wenatchee Valley, as you can see, not so bad. Gusts 22, 25 miles an hour on Wednesday. We've got it easier compared to other folks. But, of course, the Waterville Plateau, you're going to be windier uh, up in the Wenatchee Heights, those kind of areas that are already exposed to the wind, you'll just be exposed to more wind come Wednesday. We're used to the wind uh, in the middle of April, but what we really need is rain. I looked this up. We've had no days of measurable precipitation in the month of April, not once. I mean, there, there would be like a trace of rain, but it's not enough to actually measure it. So no days of measurable precipitation for the entire month of April so far. Uh, in March, we had two days, and that was it. And in, February. We had only two days where there was enough precipitation to actually register on the rain gauge. That is a long dry period and it looks like it's going to continue. In fact, from Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, who gives your home a hug, here's your forecast from the National Weather Service. Lots of sunshine today. 70, 71 maybe. Uh, just a few high filtered clouds, kind of like what we have now. What you see outside is what we're going to be dealing with most of the day. So clouds and sun will be doing battle. Northwest wind today, about 6 to 14 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour today. Mostly cloudy tonight, and then it clears out. Overnight low, about 44. It'll be windy right through the evening hours. Again, a northwest wind, very consistent, about 6 to 14 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 21 miles an hour tonight. On Wednesday, clouds will be thickening back up again. In fact, we'll have fairly cloudy skies on Wednesday. A little bit cooler, high of about 68 or 69 or so tomorrow. Again, northwest wind about 8 to 14 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 to 25 miles an hour. The, the most wind event, it looks to be Wednesday night, we could have gusts approaching 30 miles an hour, all of it blowing directly north to the south. So it's going to be anywhere between breezy to windy today, tonight, Wednesday, and then Wednesday night. All of this is going to be windy. And then Thursday we calm down. Lots of sunshine, not particularly hot, high of about 66, which is still above normal. All of these temperatures that you see are above normal. On a Thursday night, clear skies, about 38 for the overnight low. Sunshine Friday, lower 70s, and then clouds and sun will do the tug of war again on Saturday with a high of about 71 or so, 73 on Sunday with lots of sunshine. Monday, partly cloudy, 74 degrees. Lovely spring weather for the most part. It's going to be a little windy today, tonight, Wednesday, and especially Wednesday night, but by Thursday morning, the system that's going to bring us the wind will be out of here. We'll calm down. We'll have quite a bit of sunshine. Again, what we really need is rain, and there is zero, zero precipitation in the forecast for the foreseeable future. That's not good news. We are going to take a break and come back with your Tuesday morning headlines. You're watching Wake Up on Edge Valley on the NCW Live channel. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. 
Call 884-6444 today. Highlander Grill and Golf Course is known as one of the finest wedding venues in the Wenatchee area. You do not have to be a member to come to Highlander. Highlander Golf Course offers a first class backdrop for your wedding day. Our friendly professional staff will ensure your wedding and reception is picture perfect from every moment leading up to the I do's to when the lights go down at the end of your reception. Hi, I'm Shalane, site coordinator for Highlander Grill. Give me a call to schedule your event today. Eleven minutes after the hour, as you can see, we have a mixture of clouds and clear skies. We are sitting at 48 degrees, right around 70 degrees, with some clouds, mostly sunny skies, and breezy conditions today, tonight, Wednesday, and Wednesday night before we calm down on Thursday. Let's take a look at your headlines. Uh, State Department of Natural Resources firefighters spending most of the day yesterday attacking the Alpenhof fire. It's about five acres off Icicle Road, just outside of Leavenworth. The fire caught Sunday afternoon near some residences about three miles southwest of downtown Leavenworth, but so far poses no threat to private property. The DNR, by the way, took over Sunday night from local fire districts and they used hand crews and helicopters to control the fire, which was burning up a steep slope towards uh, Icicle Ridge. By the way, the cause of the fire, which was toned out about three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, remains uh, unknown. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office is warning residents to watch their mailboxes carefully after a string of mail thefts throughout the county. It's been going on for about a month or so, they think. Over the weekend, deputies found discarded pieces of stolen mail, and the Sheriff's Office is worried that with those federal stimulus checks coming out, well, the problem could get worse. Jason Reinfeld is the Chief of Special Operations, and he says everybody should be taking special care. Arrests made uh, at this time. Uh, we don't have suspect information. Um, we're definitely looking for some help from the public on this. Uh, what happened over the weekend is uh, a couple of different uh, people located just uh, some bundles of mail in some remote locations around Kashmir. It looks like somebody gone through mail from several different uh, locations and they dumped what they didn't want. Um, that mail that was located has been returned to the post office for redelivery. Uh, but we could definitely use help from the public if you see any suspicious activity um, around mailboxes, people that shouldn't be around the mailbox you don't recognize, give a call as a suspicious type of incident and uh, deputies will come check on it. Uh, as a preventative me measure, uh, we definitely recommend that you check your mail frequently, especially if you don't have a locking mailbox. Uh, if you know you have a package coming, uh, either uh, try to get a neighbor to help you pick it up if they see it on your porch or try to be there when it arrives. And of course, the, the best solution is if you can uh, get with your neighborhood and, and try to put in some locking mailboxes. Good advice from Sergeant Reinfeld. Douglas commissioners, Douglas County commissioners wanted to restart home building in Douglas County, but Governor Jay Inslee's office say they've misinterpreted his emergency rules on COVID-19. Last Wednesday, the Douglas County Commissioners passed a proclamation that would allow new home construction to proceed despite the governor's order that shuts it down statewide as a non-essential business. Inslee's spokesperson told NCW Life the commissioners have misinterpreted the governor's order and their proclamation does not supersede state law. The commissioners plan to review, perhaps even withdraw the proclamation in meetings this week. Link Transit, the bus system that uh, serves all of North Central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley, they're in line for $7 million in coronavirus relief from the federal government. But in the meantime, it's had to make some tough decisions. The Link Transit uh, Executive Director is Richard DeRock, and he had a chance to catch up with our very own Jefferson Robbins. Ridership's been devastated. Our ridership is down about 80% from where it was uh, prior to the um, uh, outbreak, uh, which since we have stay at home and spatial uh, distancing requirements, that's probably where it should be. Lately, we're about 1,200 trips a day on the system. Uh, we've cut service about 40% from where we had been operating uh, for two reasons. One is with the drop in ridership, it didn't make any sense to have the frequency we had previously. So we cut down frequency. We did not cut off access to any communities. 
a lot of people don't sort of think about that, but the people who serve food at the nursing homes or people that sweep the floors and kitchens at the hospitals, a lot of those folks use us to get to and from work as well as the food processing facilities. And we're their transportation. And since those are all critical access positions, they still need to get to and from work. And so that's what we're here for. We've actually started an advertising campaign to say that's what we're for. Don't use us if that's not what you're using us for. We're essential transportation. Uh, we've gone to social distancing on the vehicles. We stopped collecting fares over a month ago, not to encourage ridership, but to keep people away from the drivers. We don't want to keep the spacing, and the fare boxes, are co- of course, are close to the driver. Uh, plus, based on other talking about the transit systems in the country, uh, we were reminded that the counting affairs, the way those machines work, throws all sorts of stuff up in the air, and it really is a pretty dangerous thing for the people who have to deal with the money. And so most of the systems in the United States right now are not collecting fares for that reason. It's just a risk that's not appropriate for people to deal with. Uh, and of course, the economy is being impacted, so the revenues are not coming in on the backside on, in terms of the sales tax. So those are significant impacts. The positive side on that is Congress recognized the problem, and it's a much bigger problem in the large urban areas, and they they put together as part of this last package, the CARES package, um, a relief program for transit, and our share of that should provide us enough resources to keep the system going and make up shortfalls for at least eight to nine months to allow the community to get back on its feet if the economy can come back and if we're prudent we should not have to be pruning the system or reducing services to the community we should be able to regrow it as the demand starts cropping back and still deliver the expansion that we had promised the community as as we can get the system back up and operating a flatbed trailer rolled on i-90 on a monday morning this happened near moses lake it temporarily blocked both lanes of westbound traffic. That looks like a mess. The Washington State Patrol said there were no injuries, but the materials that the semi was hauling required an extensive cleanup effort. The flatbed rolled shortly after 9 a.m. yesterday morning, about two miles east of Moses Lake, and one lane of traffic was reopened within an hour. Uh, The city of East Wenatchee yesterday morning announcing that Classy Chassis, a very popular uh, car show and parade, unfortunately, it's been canceled. It was scheduled for May 1st and 2nd, the parade on May 1st, the show on May 2nd, the city says it will now focus on the Wings and Wheels Festival, which is in October. So another public event has been either postponed or canceled because of COVID-19. No classy chassis this year. Uh, in other news, both sales and listings are up in the Wenatchee real estate market in March. This is despite the economic suffering because of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's the latest findings from the Pacific Appraisal Associates back uh, here in Wenatchee. Total home sales, uh, again, this is for the month of March, we're up 3% at 72 compared to 70 at the same time last year. Closed home sales are up a whopping 19% compared to last year. Active home listings for the month of March is at 132. That's an increase of 45%. In March of 2019, they had 91 active listings. Little change in the median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market. It's pretty much the same, $335,000 last month compared to $336,500 in March of last year. Here at the NCP Live channel, we are producing a continuing series of public service announcements regarding uh, how local people should be handling the COVID-19 outbreak. And this morning we feature Rail Station. We got Todd Mills, the owner of Rail Station. Hi, my name is Todd Mills, with the Rail Station in Alehouse and Wenatchee. During this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we're urging you to stay home, stay healthy, stay safe. As an essential business during this crisis, we're doing our best to serve meals to the children in this community for free to make sure that nobody goes hungry. When this crisis passes and it's safe to do so, we hope you'll come down and join us at the rail station and Ale House. But until then, stay home, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. And finally, Eric sent me this little tidbit this morning. I thought it was kind of cool. I never actually thought that, you know, the moon would be in the seventh house and Jupiter would align with Mars and peace would guide the planets and love would steer the stars. But by golly, it could happen this week because three of the morning stars will be visible with the moon close by. We're talking about Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. They're gonna line up beside Earth's moon for just a couple of days. It's gonna last be the last time you're gonna see this for, well, probably our lifetime. Uh, this is according to Space 
Com. So Jupiter and the moon will be in conjunction at 4.05 p.m. today, Tuesday. You won't be able to see it. But Wednesday at 2.18 in the morning, Saturn will turn. And then Mars and the moon will line up on Wednesday at 9.33 in the evening. And you don't need super sophisticated telescopes and stuff like that in order to see it. That's kind of cool. Makes me realize how much I miss the lens. And they're staring at the sky. How you doing up there, Pete and Roseanne? Uh, 20 minutes after the hour. Uh, before we uh, take a quick break, a preview of the Tuesday evening news with the anchorman. Here's Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, I'll have a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast where we'll be talking another warming trend. Eric Grantson will also be in with all the latest sports news. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Do you want to get a hold of us? Well, by golly, you're good at that. You got a news tip? You want to drop us a line? Whatever it is, uh, we have any number of ways for you to get a hold of us. You can go to our website at ncwlife.com. That's our homepage, ncwlife.com. At the top of our homepage, you'll see the Contact Us icon. Click on it. Fill out the form. We'll get it here. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. That's our email address, news at ncwlife.com. You can pick up the phone and call us at the number that you see at the bottom of your screen, or you can go to our Facebook page. We got a lot of likes, but you can never have enough likes, I suppose. Like us while you're there, and you can drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. We're going to take a break, come back with sports, the obscure holiday today in history, some celebrity birthdays, and everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. You're watching a Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Rutherford from Confluence Health. I urge all of you to stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. You can provide a valuable service to all our region's healthcare professionals our hospitals, our clinics, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and adult family homes by donating cloth face masks and gowns to our efforts. If you are able to sew some masks or a gown, there are instructions online at the Chelan Douglas Health District. You can contact the Health District or the Confluence Foundation, and they will arrange to collect them and distribute them to where they are needed. We are fortunate that this is a community that cares about all of us. We will get through this coronavirus together by helping each other. Thank you and be well. And we're back at it at 24 minutes after the hour, sitting pretty at 48 degrees, right around 70 with a mixture of clouds and sun. It's gonna, the wind's gonna pick up in intensity uh, later on today. We'll have anywhere between breezy to windy conditions starting today and really lasting all the way through. Wednesday night. It is the middle of April, after all. Let's talk about sports. Former Seahawks quarterback Tavares Jackson died in a one-car accident on Sunday. This was near his home in Alabama. Alabama State Trooper Michael Carswell tells the Montgomery Advertiser that Jackson was the only person in a 2012 Chevy Camaro. Apparently, it left the roadway, struck a tree, and overturned. The crash occurred about seven miles south of Jackson's hometown of Montgomery, Alabama. Tavares Jackson drafted in the second round by the Vikings. He spent three seasons there before he signed with Seattle. He was traded to Buffalo in 2012, and he came back one more time. He was Russell Wilson's backup when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl back in 2013. Most recently, Jackson has, had been the quarterback's coach at Tennessee State. His former teammates and coaches went to Twitter, offering condolences, including uh, Russell Wilson, who said, quote, T-Jack, you will be missed, praying for your family. Love you, man, Pete Carroll. Again on Twitter, Tavares Jackson was a beloved teammate, competitor, and Seahawk. He will be deeply missed, so heartbroken by the news of his passing and sending our condolences to his family and friends. We love you forever. Jackson is survived by his wife, Lakita, and three children. He was 36 years old. On the field, the Seahawks have re-signed backup quarterback and special teams captain Nico Thorpe. He's staying with the team. According to reports, the agreement is for one year. 
It's $1 million. He gets a $100,000 signing bonus. Thorpe, according to Coach Pete Carroll, has been, quote, the spirit of the special teams for a number of years now. And it's great that the guys recognize him again. He's got a great presence in our room and with our guys, end quote. So to help compensate for loss in NCAA distribution and added expenditures caused by the coronavirus outbreak, Washington State University announcing multiple cost containment measures. On Monday, WSU football coach Nick Rolovic, men's basketball coach Kyle Smith, director of athletics Pat Chun, the president of Wazoo Kirk Schultz will all take 5% salary reductions through the end of the 2021 academic year. Other efforts taken by the school to cut expenses include a freeze in season ticket prices for all sports and a freeze in the price of student sports passes for the 2021 academic year. The article in the Spokesman Review also quotes Chun as saying, a little less than half of the school's senior spring athletes have expressed interest in returning to compete for the 2020-2021 season. The A-Team XFL Football League announcing last week it was suspending operations, ter terminating, all, uh, terminating all employees. They even filed for bankruptcy yesterday. Now, despite the shutdown, Seattle Dragons coach Jim Zorn told the Seattle Times he had not given up on the league. He said, I hope it continues on, and I think everybody does right now. There is no real way to have an emotion about it. For me, it's just a matter of continuing to go as though we were going to continue. Well, we're not going to continue. The Dragons were 1-4 and four at the time that the league suspended games back in March. They were leading the league in attendance, though. They averaged over 25,000 fans at the two games that they played at Century Link Field. The XFL, of course, had its first go around 19 years ago. And then again, they tried it again this year. There's considerable speculation that the league is gone for good this time. Even though the turkey season that was set to begin tomorrow in our state has been postponed, turkey hunters might find this video that Eric found fairly entertaining. It certainly is for me. It's from last fall as Jay Hall was trying to quietly wait in his tree stand for a deer when an unwelcomed guest decided to join him. Don't name the turkey, Jay. You'll get emotionally attached, then you won't want to eat it. Uh, of course, tonight begins our NCW Life uh, Sports Presents. This is the great games of our past, some of it quite a while ago. In fact, uh, well, tonight you can watch uh, a Big Nine volleyball match from back in October of 2016 between Wenatchee and Eastmont. Ooh, I like the font that Eric used. That's pretty good. It's Eric Granstrom and Leanne Brandon with the play-by-play. -play. You can watch it tonight here on the NCW Life Channel, and those are just some of the games that people are not playing on this Tuesday. I had a whole bunch of obscure holidays to choose from. It's National Pecan Day. I'm not a big fan of pecans as enough, but I love pecan pie. It's National Ex-Spouse Day. <laughs> Why? 
It's uh, Pan American Day. This is the day, I don't know, it's the anniversary when the Pan American organization got together. I didn't do too much research on that. Today is National Reach As High As You Can Day, which is always a good idea. I'm not doing any of those. No, we want to wish a good National Dolphin Day to all of you dolphin fans out there. Uh, dolphins, of course, are meat eaters. They mostly eat uh, fish and squid. They are very fast. They are very intelligent. Of course, they're very social. Uh, they have unbelievable hearing, way up in the upper limit of what adult humans uh, can hear. <clears throat> they can make a whole bunch of different sounds. They can hear uh, sounds under the water from miles and miles away. Of course, they live in pods. A bunch of dolphins get together, and pods exist because there's a, a sizable food source. And that's why pods all get together, and they made them highly sociable animals. And you know, when there's a bunch of pods who all get together with a bunch of food, it's called a super pod. And you can have a super pod that has over a thousand dolphins. And they, uh, as you might imagine, they establish very strong bonds within their pods. If a dolphin gets injured, the other dolphins will lift that dolphin up to the surface of the water so they can breed. You see dolphins beep, 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 beep along the water. Uh, they do this for any number of reasons. First of all, air offers much less resistance than water when you're traveling. By the way, it's called porpoising when they do that. Um, it's also orientation. It's easy to figure out where you're going when you can see where you're going as opposed to being under the water. And uh, it's also a, they also dislodge parasites that way. Parasites get on their skin and they get rid of them by jumping up and down and jumping up and down. By the way, dolphins can form type 2 diabetes. They're actually doing some research on how dolphins can possibly get type 2 diabetes, but it's possible. Happy National Dolphin Day. They call him Flipper, Flipper, faster than lightning. 32, that's awful, sorry about that. 32 minutes after the hour. Today in history, President Lincoln shot. Yeah, April 14th, 1865, 155 years ago today. Uh, he and his wife, Mary Todd, and a couple of other folks went to Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., as you well know, to watch the play Our American Cousin. It was highly publicized. John Wilkes Booth thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to keep the Confederacy alive. He shot Lincoln in the back of the head. Lincoln died uh, the next day. It was well advertised in the newspapers around Washington, D.C. that General Ulysses S. Grant and his wife, Julia, will be joining the presidential couple in the box, but fortunately, ironically enough, Julia Grant and Mary Todd Lincoln did not like each other at all. In fact, Julia Grant, U.S. Grant's wife, really couldn't stand Mary Todd Lincoln. A lot of people didn't like Mary Todd Lincoln. She was a difficult person. But Julia went to Ulysses and said, honey, I'm not going to spend two and a half hours in the same room with Mary Todd Lincoln. I'm not going to go to the play. And Ulysses said, we'll just bow out. So they didn't go. But can you imagine what would have happened to the history of this country if Grant was there alongside Lincoln and he also met his maker? Simple twists of fate. Lincoln shot 155 years ago today. Happy birthday to J.C. Penney, James Cash Penny. That's the original J.C. Penney. It's still there in uh, Kemmerer, Wyoming. James Cash Penny opened his very first J.C. Penny store 118 years ago today in 1902. He introduced a new concept to the idea of doing business with department stores, and that was profit sharing with his employees. He said, as long as we make money, I'll give money to you. By 1973, there were 2,053 J.C. Penney stores with revenues of $5 billion. That's $31 billion in today's money. Uh, today, there are 850 J.C. Penney stores. And last year, the company lost $255 million. We still have a Penney's here in town, though. Hang in there, Penney's. Uh, this story will develop, I think. Uh, April 14th, uh, 1912, uh, the British passenger liner, the RMS Titanic, at about 11.30 or so in the evening, struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic and began to take on water. Tune in to tomorrow's edition of uh, Wake Up Wenatchee Valley during the Today in History segment, and you'll learn more about this. My favorite book, my favorite novel, I should say, I'm a big reader. I prefer nonfiction, biographies, things like that. Um, but I have read most of the great American novels, including The Grapes of Wrath, which to me is the greatest American novel ever written by my favorite author, John Steinbeck. And on April 14th, 1939, 81 years ago today, The Grapes of Wrath was first published. 
That is the New York Times view of the Grapes of Wrath. They said it's a really good book. This book was incredibly controversial, especially in California, where they attempted to have the book banned. It is now considered, of course, one of the greatest books ever written by an American author, The Grapes of Wrath. It is a must read. I think I've read it five, six times, and I'll read it again in the not too distant future. And finally, April 14th, 1968, that's the actual scorecard from Roberto Di Ventillo, uh, the great uh, golfer. Um, Bob Golby won the Masters, and he won the Masters because uh, poor Roberto turned in an incorrect scorecard. Uh, it, it was on televised. It all, everybody assumed, okay, the two were tied. They're going to have an 18-hole playoff on Monday. But uh, poor Roberto didn't notice that his playing partner, Tommy Aaron, wrote down four instead of three on 17. He actually, Roberto, got a three. He birdied 17. Tommy Aaron, who, you know, your opponents keep track of your score and you keep track of your opponent's score, he wrote down four. Roberto didn't notice, and he simply signed his scorecard, and you have to sign for the score that you signed for. The golfer, the, the, the card, the, the, the score stands as he signed it. So instead of having a tie and going to a playoff, Bob Golby won, but Roberto did not always check your scorecard. 36 minutes after the hour, birthdays. This man should have been inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame so long ago. I don't know why it took a so long. Back in 1992, Red Barber, the great broadcaster, said the three most important people in the history of baseball are Babe Ruth, Jackie Robinson, and Marvin Miller. And he's right. Uh, Marvin Miller was the executive director of the Major League Baseball Players Association. And during his tenure, when he began in 1966, the average salary for a Major League Baseball player was $19,000. When he retired in 1982, the average salary for a Major League Baseball player was $326,000. Today, the average salary for a Major League Baseball player is $1.4 million. And because of Marvin Miller, the players now get paid what they should be getting paid. And because of Mar Marvin Miller, Major League Baseball remains the only professional sports league anywhere that does not have a salary cap. He's going to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame this summer. And on merit, I might add, Marvin Miller was born on this date back in 1917. Lived a long time, died at the age of 95 back in 2012. Rod Steiger, the great actor born on this date in 1925, was a war hero in World War II, then went to acting four times. Of course, he was Martin Brando's brother, Charlie, in our On the Waterfront. He won an Academy Award for In the Heat of the Night. But his best movie, and you got to watch it if you've never seen it, is called The Pawnbroker. came out in 1964. The great Rod Steiger, born on this date in 1925, died at the age of 77 in 2002. Loretta Lynn. What do you say about Loretta Lynn? She's 88 years old today, the most awarded female country artist ever. Nobody has won more awards than hers. She is the only female to win the Artist of the Decade in the 1970s. She was named the Artist of the Decade. She remains the only female to pull off that seat. 24 number one hits on the country charts, 11 number one albums. Loretta Lynn, the coal miner's daughter, is 88 years old today. Pete Rose is 79 years old today. Regardless of how you feel about Pete, he does still hold a number of incredible records. Of course, he is the all-time leader in hits in Major League Baseball, 4,256. He played more games in Major League Baseball than anybody in history, 3,562. 14,053 at bats. Many of these records may ne never be broken. Pete Rose is 79 years old today. And of course, as you well know, I follow uh, sumo wrestlers from Mongolia. It's a hobby of mine, and I can't let today go by without wishing. Uh, Haramafuji Kohi, a happy birthday. Yes, uh, Haramafuji uh, Kohi is uh, 36 years old today. By the way, he is the 70th Yokozuna, which is basically like the heavyweight champion of sumo wrestling. Happy 36th birthday to one of my favorite sumo wrestlers from Upper Mongolia. Mike McNaughty's checking in. So we see what some Mike's my Oh, it's, uh, Mike McNaughty's checking in. Watch Undefeated last night. By the way, the Undefeated was the movie that Eric recommended the sports movie called Undefeated. Really good movie. Mike says, uh, watched Undefeated last night. Great. East of Eden is my favorite Steinbeck. It's a good book. So is Travels with Charlie. Mike, I will give you that East of Eden is an outstanding book. I'm going to go with The Grapes of Wrath. They didn't try and ban East of Eden. <laughs> Mike McNaughty is going to check in with Michael. He'll have new shows, by the way, coming up uh, next month. We're going to take a break. When we come back, speaking of Mike McNaughty, he's got an opinion. He always does. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Coming home 
should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Crow in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. I'm Dr. Wayne Latimer. I'm a chiropractic physician. I have postgraduate certifications in both whiplash, trauma, and rehab, as well as sports medicine. The location is great. The light and the visibility, the 17-foot ceilings are fantastic. You can go into a lot of clinics, and it's very clinical. People really like the spa environment, so my whole premise was take a spa environment, add the very serious rehab, and give people an enjoyable way to get better over time. Kelly's Ace Hardware is open and ready to help with all the essential items you need at this time. Curb service and limited delivery available as well. You can always count on Kelly's when the community calls. Mailbox of Chelan provides important services to our community and will continue to do so on new limited hours. Whatever your shipping and receiving need, Jerry and Sherry are here to help from 9 to 3 weekdays. Green Dot Subs is open for takeout business. All those fabulous sandwiches that people drive miles to get are still available at both locations in Manson and Chelan. Call ahead and they will make one for you. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street, in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. Pibus Public Market restaurants are open for takeout and our fresh produce, meats, and seafood shops open for pickup. Go to www.pibusmarket.org, click on the red Pibus Market and COVID-19 button to view hours, menus, and place orders online. We are grateful for your continued support of the Pibus Public Market restaurants and merchants. Mike's Meats and Seafood, Royal Produce, Little Red's Bakery and Espresso, Fire and Ice, and Pyrus Bistro. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Uh, you know, well, we've been wrong about heaven and hell. I, re I realize that we've been taught about these places, and it's really screwed up. First of all, hell isn't hot. No, it's not. I mean, you're supposed to be miserable there, right? So instead of being hot, Hell must be colder than a well digger's butt with slush, ice, and terminally cold, wet, wet feet. And heaven is supposed to be paradise, right? A place where you're both really comfortable, happy, and thrilled to be there? Okay. So heaven has got to be a place where it's warm, with warm salt water, cold beer, and garlic shrimp. But you know what else is going to be in heaven? Roller coasters, yes! Wild, crazy, upside down and corkscrew roller coasters with never a line you have to wait in. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Heaven. <laughs> this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and that is my opinion. Owner Andrew Vickery brings years of experience to help you transition your backyard into a place where memories are made, family time is looked forward to, and friends are always welcome. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa offers many different styles and sizes of artesian spas, both new and used, as well as residential and commercial pool and spa services, regular maintenance and repairs, and all the chemicals required to keep your pool and spa crystal clear. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. 
applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Save Mart remains open to serve our community with its huge selection of furniture, mattresses, and appliances. Parts and service department is ready to make sure you have what you need to keep your household functioning during these unusual times. Menachee Power Sports is keeping its parts and service departments open to serve the greater community. Agriculture and others depend on these machines to continue to produce and transport the goods and services we need. If you have a pest problem, Harvest Valley Pest Control will remain available to take care of your needs. Call 797-0090 and let us know how we can make your home pest-free. We've been in this valley for almost 40 years, helping people get and stay strong. As I sit here in this empty gym, I wanna remind you of that strength. We're a hardworking community built from agriculture and local business, and we'll get through this. In the meantime, stay distant, stay active, stay safe. We will all be here when this is over. Due to circumstances beyond my control, I'm back at 46 minutes after the hour. Still holding steady at 48 degrees. We'll be about 70, they tell us. This afternoon, we'll have one more look at your weather forecast in just a couple of minutes. But once again, a look at what's making headlines this morning. State Department of Natural Resource firefighters uh, spent most of the day yesterday attacking the Alpenhof fire. Not very big. It's only about five acres off of Icicle Road, just outside of Leavenworth. The fire was toned in about 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Started near some residences about three miles southwest of downtown, but so far it poses no threat to private property. The DNR took over Sunday night from local fire districts, and they've been using hand crews and helicopters to control the fire, which was burning up a steep slope towards Icicle Ridge. By the way, the cause of the fire not known on this Tuesday morning. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office is warning residents to watch their mailboxes carefully. Apparently there's been a string of mail thefts going on throughout Chelan County for about a month or so. Over the weekend, deputies found discarded pieces of stolen mail and the sheriff's office is worried that, hey, those federal stimulus checks are gonna be mailed out pretty soon and that problem could get a lot worse. People stealing your checks. Jason Reinfeld is the chief of special operations and says everybody should be taking extra care. Arrests made uh, at this time. Uh, we don't have suspect information. Um, we're, we're definitely looking for some help from the public on this. Uh, what happened over the weekend is uh, a couple of different uh, people located just uh, some bundles of mail in some remote locations around Kashmir. It looks like somebody had gone through mail from several different uh, locations and they dumped what they didn't want. Um, that mail that was located has been returned to the post office for redelivery. Uh, but we could definitely use help from the public if you see any suspicious activity. Um, around mailboxes, people that shouldn't be around the mailbox you don't recognize, give a call as a suspicious type of incident and uh, deputies will come check on it. Uh, as a preventative me measure, uh, we definitely recommend that you check your mail frequently, especially if you don't have a locking mailbox. Uh, if you know you have a package coming, uh, either uh, try to get a neighbor to help you pick it up if they see it on your porch or try to be there when it arrives. And of course, the, the best solution is if you can uh, get with your neighborhood and, and try to put in some locking mailboxes. Good advice from Sergeant Reinfeld. As you know by now, Douglas County commissioners wanted to restart home building in Douglas County, but Governor Jay Inslee's office say the commissioners have misinterpreted his emergency rules on COVID-19. Last Wednesday, the Douglas County commissioners passed a proclamation that would allow new home construction to proceed despite the governor's order that shuts it down statewide as a non-essential business. Inslee's spokesperson told us here at the NCB Life Channel, the commissioners have misinterpreted the governor's order and their proclamation does not supersede state law. The commissioners plan to review and perhaps even withdraw that proclamation in meetings during this week. Link Transit, the bus system that serves the Wenatchee Valley, North Central Washington, is online for $7 million in coronavirus relief dollars from the federal government, but in the meantime, it's had to make some tough decisions. Richard DeRock 
is the executive director of Link Transit, and he told us all about it and with an interview with our own Jefferson Robbins. Ridership's been devastated. Our ridership is down about 80% from where it was uh, prior to the um, uh, outbreak, uh, which, since we have stay-at-home and spatial uh, distancing requirements, that's probably where it should be. Lately, we're about 1,200 trips a day on the system. Uh, we've cut service about 40% from where we had been operating uh, for two reasons. One is with the drop in ridership, it didn't make any sense to have the frequency we had previously. So we cut down frequency. We did not cut off access to any communities. A lot of people don't sort of think about that, but the people who serve food at the nursing homes or people that sweep the floors and kitchens at the hospitals, a lot of those folks use us to get to and from work as well as the food processing facilities. And we're their transportation. And since those are all critical access positions, they still need to get to and from work. And so that's what we're here for. We've actually started an advertising campaign to say that's what we're for. Don't use us if that's not what you're using us for. We're essential transportation. Uh, we've gone to social distancing on the vehicles. We stopped collecting fares over a month ago, not to encourage ridership, but to keep people away from the drivers. We don't want to keep the spacing, and the fare boxes, are cor- of course, are close to the driver. Uh, plus, based on other talking to the transit systems in the country, uh, we were reminded that the counting of fares, the way those machines work, throws all sorts of stuff up in the air, and it really is a pretty dangerous thing for the people who have to deal with the money. And so most of the systems in the United States right now are not collecting fares for that reason. It's just a risk that's not appropriate for people to deal with. Uh, and of course, the economy is being impacted, so the revenues are not coming in on the backside on, in terms of the sales tax. So those are significant impacts. The positive side on that is Congress recognized the problem, and it's a much bigger problem in the large urban areas, and they they put together as part of this last package, the CARES package, um, a relief program for transit, and our share of that should provide us enough resources to keep the system going and make up shortfalls for at least eight to nine months to allow the community to get back on its feet yes the economy can come back and if we're prudent we should not have to be pruning the system or reducing services to the community we should be able to regrow it as the demand starts cropping back and still deliver the expansion that we had promised the community as as we can get the system back up and operating a flatbed trailer rolled on i-90 on monday morning that looks like a mess this is uh, near moses lake it temporarily blocked both lanes Uh, Westbound traffic, the Washington State Patrol said there were no injuries, but the materials that the semi was hauling required an extensive cleanup effort. The flatbed rolled shortly after 9 o'clock, about two miles east of Moses Lake. One lane of traffic was reopened within an hour. City of East Wenatchee announcing yesterday morning that the Classy Chassis Parade and Car Show, which was scheduled for May 1st to May 2nd, has been canceled. The parade is always on Friday, May 1st of Apple Blossom Festival. The show is on May 2nd. Ain't going to happen this year. The city says it will now focus on the Wings and Wheels Festival, which is another big tradition in East Wenatchee. That's October 2nd and 3rd. So another uh, another item of going by the wayside, another organization or event going by the wayside because of COVID-19. Both sales and listings were up in the Wenatchee real estate market for the month of March, despite the economic suffering because of the pandemic. Uh, Pacific Appraisal Associates in Wenatchee uh, handles these numbers. Total home sales were up 3% at 72% last month compared to 70 at the same time last year. Closed home sales are up 19% compared to last year. Active home listings last month at 132. March of 2019, there were only 91 active listings, so that's an increase of 45%. Little change in the median sales price of a home, $335,000. In March of this year, $336,500. Last year, pretty much the same. And finally, our continuing series of public service announcements from people in our communities regarding COVID-19, Todd Mills is the owner of The Rail Station. Hi, my name is Todd Mills with The Rail Station in Alehouse and Wenatchee. During this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we're urging you to stay home, stay healthy, stay safe. As an essential business during this crisis, we're doing our best to serve meals to the children in this community for free to make sure that nobody goes hungry. When this crisis passes and it's safe to do so, we hope you'll come down and join us at The Rail Station in Alehouse. But until then, stay home, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you. 
Thank you, my friend. We are going to take a break and come back and take one more look at the weather forecast. Quite a bit of sunshine, quite a bit of wind. Details are coming up. You're watching Michael Bonacci Valley on the NCW Live channel. The world around us is constantly changing. Major employers in North Central Washington have expressed a need for capable, qualified engineering technologists who can think critically and solve problems. And at Wenatchee Valley College, we listen. We are pleased to offer a Bachelor of Applied Science Engineering Technology degree to provide you with a world of new opportunities. Your time is now. The future is waiting for you. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. CASA and Together for Youth are dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in keeping kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. About four minutes to go on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Anche Valley. I am Dan Koontz. One of the reasons we put such an emphasis on the weather forecast is that it's the one thing that affects everybody. What's the weather going to be like? Well, first of all, come tomorrow, it's going to be windy. It's going to be breezy today. It's going to be breezy tonight. It's going to be downright windy on Wednesday. Take a look at your wind gust, for, uh, wind gust forecast from the National Weather Service. Once again, uh, the OMAC Okanagan area, the Okanagan Valley, is going to get hardest hit by the wind. As you can see, it's going to blow straight from the north right down to the south, and that means blowing dust and glucky junk in the air in the Columbia Basin. As the winds pick up speed and get a little momentum, then they head into the Moses Lake area. Uh, they could have some poor visibility in the Moses Lake area, especially tomorrow afternoon. And the reason for all of this, of course, is that there is no moisture, none. And there's just nothing holding the soil and the dirt to the ground, and it doesn't take a lot of wind for them to pick up that dust and get it moving. And if you get a lot of wind, it's gonna pick up a lot of dust and get it moving. So we're looking at maybe some blowing dust possible near the exposed fields around North Central Washington. And that of course includes our friends out in the Columbia Basin in Moses Lake. Uh, this is all on Wednesday. It's gonna be breezy pretty much for everybody. Uh, and that's gonna start a little bit later on today, but the, the, the biggest wind event's gonna be really Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night before we calm down. Let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast in detail from the National Weather Service. You want sunshine, you're gonna get that for the most part. Clouds will be coming in and out, but the sun's gonna win most of the battle today. We'll be in the lower 70s. A northwest wind today about six to 14 miles an hour with, uh, with gusts above 20 at times. Tonight, uh, the clouds will be fairly thick early on, and then as you're sleeping, gradually, uh, the clouds will be departing and we'll have clear skies by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. Our overnight low tonight is expected to be around 44 degrees. And again, breezy tonight, a northwest wind about 6 to 13 miles an hour and gusts around 21, 22 miles an hour. Wednesday, uh, we start out with clear skies and then the clouds thicken up. And by Wednesday night, we'll have mostly cloudy skies, slightly cooler, about 68, 69 or so for the afternoon high tomorrow. Again, northwest wind about 8 to 14 miles an hour. Then it's a north to south wind by the time we get to the afternoon. This is when it picks up late in the afternoon, early evenings. We're talking about gusts anywhere between 25 to 30 miles an hour here in the valley. Now in other locations that are more wind prone, you're gonna see gusts above 30 miles an hour, maybe even closer to 40 miles an hour late Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday night with an overnight low of right around 37, 38 degrees. Normally the wind dies down in the evening hours. Not really gonna be the case tonight, nor Wednesday night, but uh, things calm down and uh, get rather pleasant on Thursday. Sunshine, a high of about 66 degrees. Overnight low Thursday night, about 38. Sunshine on Friday, slightly warmer, high of 73 degrees. So the sun's gonna be winning most of these battles for most of the week, but we're not gonna get rid of some cloud cover. It'll, the clouds will be coming in and out at times. Saturday, partly cloudy, about 71 degrees. Sunday, mostly sunny, about high of 73. And as far as the wind is concerned, as I mentioned before, anywhere between breezy to downright windy, depending on what you consider your definition, uh, today, tonight, Wednesday, windy for sure, Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday night, and then we're done with the wind on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What we really need is rain. We need measurable rain, and we got none in the forecast. We, uh, we're in a drought, as we mentioned yesterday, and Grant mentioned it again today. If any significant change in the weather happens as far as the forecast is concerned, Grant will keep you in the loop. 
when he does the news at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock with Eric Grandstrom handling sports. That's it for Wake Up on Anchee Valley. I will see you Wednesday. Have a good Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.